We have time, so we'll go right into a Felonious Monk original Straight No Chaser. Vinyl community, I'm back again to do another Tales of the Dead Wax. Uh, before I get into this one, I have to thank everybody for their support of this particular project. Uh, I'm by no means done. Uh, I have a few more ideas that I want to explore uh, through this series, and I appreciate all the comments that you've given me. Um, so, for today's uh, Tales of the Dead Wax, uh, I wanted to talk about a mastering engineer. And as you could tell from my intro here, um, if you're a Blue Note fan, a Prestige fan, uh, you probably know who I'm talking about, and that's Rudy Van Gelder. Uh, Rudy Van Gelder, uh, he's a very fascinating figure because he's deeply associated with Blue Note. In fact, uh, most of the Blue Note releases were uh, recorded by Rudy Van Gelder. A lot of the Prestige uh, recordings were also done by Van Gelder. He also did some work for Verve, CTI, Impulse. He did a couple of Atlantic titles. He also did some work with Vox uh, and did some classical music. Uh, Rudy Van Gelder is also one of the few individuals that did mixing and mastering. So normally those two individuals are completely separated in today's environment. You have a dedicated mixing engineer who is in the studio with the band, and then once the tapes are made or the, the digital file is made, it is then turned over to a mastering engineer, and it is mastered for vinyl, CD, or whatever medium you'd like. Uh, Rudy Van Gelder did everything uh, in-house, and you know I think that is probably the best setup because you heard the band playing live, and so you know how it should sound on vinyl. Uh, Rudy Van Gelder started out as an optometrist and uh, he was just doing jazz recordings on the side uh, in his parents house. Uh, eventually he moved out, had a full-fledged studio built up uh, and you know he you know he was a highly in-demand uh, jazz uh, recording engineer. Now, uh, to get into the dead wax portion of this, uh, the reason why I'm calling out Rudy Van Gelder is he's one of the few guys that has had differing dead wax imprints over the years. Um, to start out, this is probably the oldest blue note in my collection. Uh, this is Blue Note 1551 by Jimmy Smith uh, at the organ. Now, uh, why is this one significant? Well, before 1957, uh, Rudy Van Gelder used a etched dead wax um, with his initials RVG. And if you see an etched RVG in the dead wax, it's good for dating your LP. So you can tell, hey, okay, that one was before about the middle of 1957. 57... Uh, he changed things up. Uh, I'm showing this LP because it's um, one of the more interesting one of my interesting ones in my collection. Uh, this is by the Modern Jazz Quartet, and uh, this was originally recorded in 1955. And this is not the original cover. The original cover looked like this. Now, midway through 1957. Rudy Van Gelder got away from the etched dead wax and went to a stamped RVG. Now, why is this record so fascinating? Well, it was caught midway through. So, uh, the side A has the etched RVG, but when you flip it over, you have the stamped RVG. 1959, uh, you had another change uh, to Blue Note uh, in particular and uh, some of his work with Prestige. So 1959 is uh, really when 
uh, he got set up with a stereo uh, configuration for recording stuff in stereo. He had it a, a, a while back, but uh, in 59, his dead wax imprint had stereo in addition to his initials RVG added. Uh, this particular record, Dexter Calling, is one of those ones. So uh, if your blue note starts with an 8, for example, and there's a stereo up there, 8 and stereo, 8 essentially means it's stereo. If you do not have an 8 there, it's, it's mono. So uh, this is one of the ones that had RVG stereo, and this is what it looks like. When you hit 1962, uh, and this is one of the Verve recordings that he did, uh, this was not released in 1962, but this is just an example to highlight. Uh, in 1962, uh, he changed uh, the dead wax signature again, and he had his last name written in full, Van Gelder. Now, he continued with doing stereo uh, all the way up till about 1965, and then in 1965, he got rid of the stereo Van Gelder. Uh, this one was released in 65, I believe, and just features the Van Gelder name in the dead wax. The last record that I want to show you is uh, Don uh, Sebeski, The Rave of Belv Moro. This is done on CTI. Uh, Creed Ta Taylor uh, had a good relationship with Rudy, and Rudy did most of the recording for CTI records. Um, so again, this is just another example, uh, sort of like the verb one that I just shown. Van Gelder is in the dead wax. So if you do not see Van Gelder, uh, then he did not do the actual lacquer cut. Uh, it was done by somebody else. So uh, if you're a Blue Note collector, if you look on eBay, I mean, people are looking for RVG or Van Gelder in the dead wax. So I have to show you the inspiration for this particular video. This is Blue Note Records, a guide for identifying the original pressings by Frederick Cohen. Uh, if you're a big time Blue Note collector and you do not have this book, I recommend picking it up. Uh, there is a website done by the La London Jazz Collector where he's done variations for prestige and impulse. Uh, but his source of inspiration was this book here. Uh, this book, I think, is out of print, but you can still get copies uh, from this gentleman's website. I will include a link down below. Uh, but just to show you uh, some of the great things, so it goes into the, the covers, uh, the variations in the covers. And uh, here we go. Here are Rudy Van Gelder's Mastering Dies. So... Uh, I just happened to pick up a new Blue Note and I grabbed this and I pulled it out for reference and I saw this and I thought it would make a good Tales of the Dead Wax feature. So, for you folks out there, again, thank you for your support of this project. Uh, what do you think about Van Gelder? I know somebody or some people think he has a boxy piano sound, but I love his recordings. Uh, do you have any thoughts? Do you have any comments about Van Gelder? Shoot me a comment down below, and thank you for watching.